Hello everybody and welcome back to Arcade Spirits where last time we literally left off with my pants on fire. Well actually my pants were just gone. No, we left off with my pants on fire and then I ripped them off. So I am pantsless running around an arcade, an old spooky mansion arcade auction and uh, yelling for Gavin. So we get to see how Gavin uh, reacts to me being pantsless, I guess, and uh, how everybody else <laughs> Here he is. Anyway, there's more to it than being pantsless in the next part. It's actually a really good lead up to a lot of that's going to happen that furthers our progression as as a character, as a person. So I'm really looking forward to it. Like, I hope you guys enjoy as well. And I will be with you in a moment. Oh, Gavin, 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 Gavin. Ah, there you are. Me? Did you find Naomi? The action's nearly, auction's nearly over. Wait, where are your pants? Not important right now. <laughs> You need to put a bid down on a game called Polybius so we can destroy it before it hurts anyone else. What? Look, it's a long story. We don't have much time. So, if you wanted that game, whatever it is, you should have put it on the wish list. They're bidding on it now. What? No pants! We're no pants! Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Sold. One rare Polybius prototype. Oh, for an undisclosed sum to the undisclosed bidder. I feel like a why, Hamza? She's obviously, what? No, Hamza, no! She's obviously here for bad reasons. The woman who hadn't said anything all night long nods her head in appreciation, still expressionless. Thank you for your cooperation, woman in black. Two similarly dressed men in black rise from their chairs to party with the woman. Presumably you go box up the game and put it in a warehouse. Okay, if they take it and they're like gonna put it away somewhere safe, then maybe that's okay. But if they're gonna use it for evil purposes. Eddie, hi! Sharky Anne, how are you? I'm actually never sure if I pronounce your name correctly, but I've called you Anne in my head. But thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, Two Flower's been keeping us company. She's <laughs> been great. Presumably, yeah, to a box of the game. But Hamza, wait, you can't. Hamza's hands are tied. All sales are final. This one, in particular, is extremely final. Hamza does not seek to cross federal authorities. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should let one go too. It's Enna? Oh, it's a really cool way to spell it. It's good, it's a confusing, I'm sure you've, you've been like suffering since childhood, right? Everyone's like, I and me, and you're like, no, Enna. Okay. Okay, and honestly, the sooner I forget about it, the better, especially if I don't want to be rendered into a black side prison. And a sp unspecified Istan. I like it. I like that place. I feel the need to make... <laughs> That's true, <laughs> Gavin. Thank you for reminding me I'm not wearing pants. I feel the need to emphasize that you aren't wearing any pants. Um, yeah, my phone caught on fire while I was in my pocket. See, uh. this is why I don't like smartphones. They're privacy invasive, overly expensive, and occasionally combustible. Thank you, Gavin, for understanding. I was worried that if everybody, he'd be the most upset that I'm not wearing pants right now. An unfortunate incident indeed. But as a hospitable host, my host, my host, blah, as a hospitable host, my co course is clear. Hamza, show my new it! Hamza shall provide you with his pants. <laughs> Hamza's gonna provide you with pants. That is extremely not necessary, <laughs> unfortunately. Rather than whipping off his trousers right then and there, Hamza summons one of his helpers with a clap, who provides a spare pair. Hamza's the real MVP. He's got a, can I, can he like provide me with like a whole outfit? Cause I would, I would wear that stuff everywhere. I'd roll my hand. Why do you just have pants on demand? <laughs> In my line of work, one must be prepared for <laughs> all eventualities. Now, in apology for being unable to provide you the game you sought, perhaps Hamza can offer you something special in recompense. I still haven't found Naomi. Is Naomi in the game? What a gracious host. I know, right? My friends, the final three games for auctions, all rare, all special, all highly sought after by collectors and operators alike. Only a few prototypes were ever made, released to test markets. None of them made it to mass production. What you are about to see are rare gems of arcade history. Eric Cater, you may make a priority bid on any one of these games of your choosing. At a glance at Gavin, a glance at Gavin, who's shaking his head slightly, confirming we are officially out of bidding power. Not that I really care. I can't really think of any obscure games I'd want to add to the complex, but better to accept Hamza's apology and take a gander at them. Sure, let's see him. I'm gonna have to trade, like, my left arm or something, right? And with a click of a slide, I see 
<gasps> Behold, oh. praise invaders, wyvern keep, and zombie meltdown, all in mint condition. Oh. All three are sought after endlessly oh, by collectors, and now you can bid on oh man see okay here's the thing is i don't know how this is gonna go exactly but these are two player games which means we'd have more people playing them but i want whatever wyvern keep because that looks really cool it's a single player game phrase invaders oh and it's typing based, based yeah game from the land of the rising sun japan defeat the alien menace and only okay. with a keyboard Wyvern Keep, a much sought after Laserdisc full Princess motion Plucky. video game. Play Princess Plucky and rescue the fair prince from the clutches of a He also has a bison that stresses M. Bison on hand at all times. I mean, he probably does. He probably legitimately does. He seems like the kind of guy who's been around the block long enough to have things. I want Wyvern Keep too, you guys, but the arcade! The arcade needs something that's like got multiple players, you know? So that way we can bring in people who want to be competitive, maybe. And finally, and the zombie, zombie game's Melska, a classic. A classic 1980 light gun shooting game where you save the president from the red threat of radioactive mutant There's a cheerleader. zombies. Ari Kato. Tell me, which of these rare games sings to you? And what can you offer Hamza? It's Dragon Slayer, yeah. Why don't we just keep this cool phrase in there? It reminds me of all the typing games you played in school. Yeah, definitely. Like the like I, I played a lot of games like that, or at least I played a few obsessively. What can I offer him in return? My soul? I don't know. I don't have anything. I'll allow you a few. Ooh, this is a practice though. This is like this whole time. This whole chapter two has been about chapter one was about us learning to not 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 compromise and to not like you know, take what we could get, but to try to try to go for something better, right? To not like, you know, well, I can't remember the word that we they use, shoot, um, but like, you know, to stand up for ourselves essentially and, and have hope essentially, and not just, you know, take the more stable, le the safer option. But this chapter has been about us learning that even though it's good to have dreams and you need to fight for them, you have to be able to balance reality and the, the dream at the same time, you know? So, it's been teaching us that the trade-offs aren't necessarily bad. We can take trade-offs that aren't gonna like make us lesser. We can take trade-offs that'll make us better in the end. So, right now, this is what this is. This is what we're. With. Also, Roma, I could just trade my shirt. I could just trade my shirt, and then I'd be completely naked, and that'll be fine, I guess. If if he'll take that. of kittens, Naomi. Oh, I found them hidden in an old arcade cabinet. They're meowing. I can hear them meowing. Oh my gosh. That's what Naomi was busy doing, rescuing kittens. Um, Francine and I got hidden into a shelter. Oh, we could keep one as an arcade mascot. Wait, wow. is that Brace Invaders? OMG, I've never seen one in person. I could restore that, really make it shine. Please, please, can we bid on it? Even Don't if we care. had the money, a quirky old Japanese game with weird controls won't earn a single token. Now, zombie- I KNEW IT! Zombie Meltdown, that's another story. Everybody likes a light gun game. Simple controls, simple premise, that'll earn and earn well. Ugh, way too Ugh. violent and gross. And jingoistic. And sort of dumb. I guess we could also see Waver and Keith at the fun flex, though. Women protagonists and 50 cents of, and 50 cents of play? We both walk away happy. Oh, That's okay, the one I want is the middle ground. I could live with that, yes. But it's all moot. We can't afford any of them. These are the sorts of games millionaires and private collectors scoop up. I suggest we get to work in moving our purchases out of the van. Aerie, do you concur? Um, Earth to Aerie, you in there? Hello? I'm about to give away my soul. <gasps> oh, the game I'm imagining is one of those... Oh, doggy, stop. It's one of those games. Before my family fell on hard times, before the curse kicked in, 
every summer we go to the beach and there was this arcade with this one game I fell completely in love with. A game no one had ever heard of before. Yes, I remember now. Hamza, I've come to bargain. We're gonna get our childhood game! Such fire! I see fire in your eyes, Ari Cater. Most impressive. Speak your desires for all to hear. I want the Wyvern game! I want the Wyvern game! I want it! The narrator, the music, the way the cartoon played out in front of me, amazing, like nothing I'd ever seen before. I traded tips with other kids at the arcade, trying to master the sequence of moves to win the game. And eventually, I beat the wyvern. I rescued the prince, the first kid in the arcade to do so. My parents were so proud of me. Oh, my parents were proud of me for beating an arcade game. That's really nice. Those were good years, good memories, before the sorrows drowned them out. I wish to make a bid for a wyvern's keep. Hmm, good choice. I'm okay with that. I suppose Wyvern Keep would earn its keep, but we still can't afford it. Interesting. Okay, he's gonna speak. I can see I the passion you have for this game, my friend. But the world Indeed. demands it. Passion its isn't just gonna get you by when you want your dream. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta compromise to the real world too. I like this. This balance of like dreams and like reality. It's like you don't have to like. Forget your dream in reality, kind of like what we did. We kind of just let reality like take us and like bring us apart. But like you do, you have to make the compromises. I really like this. It's not just, it's not just like, yay, your dreams. It's an anime. Friendship wins the day. Like it's like too real and like really good at the same time. What will you bid to obtain the game what of your I dreams? Bid? I wonder. Consider Ooh. this the final lesson of Hamza. What will you trade to realize your ambitions? What do you hold? This is also where villains are them? made, to be honest. What are you willing to trade to like achieve your final goal? Uh, the life of my daughter. Uh, <laughs> Avengers. <laughs> Hi, doggy. Are you okay? Show Hamza what you have your to offer, my friend. Show him the value you hold within your spirit. And perhaps fortune will smile upon you this day rather oh, than man. cursing your name. Oh man. I'm petting my dog with my one hand. Alternative bids. I remember Gavin mentioned that Hamza would accept things other than money if they tickled his fancy. I have one shot at this. I can't half ass it. He's an emotional guy and expects an emotional response. Hey, oh, what? Listen. Where are you? Oh! Oh! My iris took over the other iris. Why is my phone calling out to you exactly? And that doesn't sound like my iris. Now? Seriously? Hamza, hold that thought. Gavin, can I borrow your phone for a second? Perhaps too confused to offer resistance, Gavin passes me his phone. I turn my back and begin a heated exchange of whispers. Thanks for saving me by burning my pants, but this is not a good time, Iris. It's important. My emotional tension detection routine to take this as an intense identity situation. My programmers wanted me to fit in and, and R, but you know the rest. Since you need to be super convincing, you'll only be able to respond in a way that matches one of your top two identity traits! Exclude it. What? Oh man, kitten souls? I could offer kitten souls instead? I'm purely bad about that. I'd rather give him my soul. Fortunately, I've been tracking your personality all this time, so I can advise you as to what responses will and won't work. Ready? Let's do it. Well, that certainly was a whole lot of words to tell me what I already knew, that I'd only be able to convince Hamza if I was true to myself. Let's do this. I offer you my dream. I offer you revenge for what? Revenge for what? That doesn't. I don't. I don't that one doesn't make sense. I offer you a joke. Um, I feel like at this point, the only thing I can offer, the only thing that makes sense, is my dream. Right? It's very Sith. Yeah, I offer you revenge. Like, what am I gonna... It would be interesting to see his response to that, but I think this is the one that's mo most likely... That was the thing I was thinking of anyway. The only thing I have to offer is my dream from, like, the get-go. So that's what I have. Uh, Deco... Oh! Flower! Good point! Good point! Oh, man. Revenge on, like, the big guy. Because that would be something where, like, my ambition would make it so that we want to, like, become better than the Deco Palace. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. That's cool. I think I'll still go with the dream. But that's good to know kind of where that one goes. Maybe. Maybe. You've given me a possible hint. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna offer my dream. How are you my dream? Interesting. Continue. 
For years, I've been struggling with the feeling that nothing will ever go right for me, that I need to content, content myself with whatever comes my way and endure it all. But before things went sour, this game was my beacon. I loved this game with all my heart. And beyond nostalgia, it represents so much more. It represents my shot at getting that light back in my life, at taking it and making it into so much more. I want to recapture that magic and build something greater upon it. That's my dream. Will you help me realize that dream, Hamza? So I see. Very Such well, Arikata. Hamza recognizes the fire within your spirit, and he rewards you with this boon. You may have your game. Well, I can use a magic sword! Aw, Ari, that was so sweet of you! I'm just happy we're walking out the door with a free game. The, the, the Ren Revenge one's basically the Renegade. It is actually very similar to the Renegade Star. I'm kind of... Man, that one would have been interesting, like, story-wise. I don't know. I feel like with the Dream one, we got the game, but, like, it would have been cool to say, Hey, we're gonna get... We're gonna, we're gonna knock down that Deco Palace place and, and knock down that corporation. That would have been cool, but that's okay. That's crazy. On the Polybius. That's, um, that's really cool. I didn't know it was a real thing. That's awesome. I did it. I actually own a copy of Wyvern Keep. Every kid dreams of owning their own favorite arcade game, and every kid thinks that dream will never come to pass. Only an owning an arcade game? Only the ultra-rich can do that. I've actually seen, um, I would go to some friends' houses who were pretty wealthy. I had a couple who had, um, like, uh, they had, like, one of those, like, Pac-Man arcade things, but they were, like, the updated ones that had, like, every version of Pac-Man, every version of Space Invader, and, like, like, ten other games in there, and I was just like, whoa, like, I didn't, I didn't think you would have one of those in your house, but apparently you can. I always, I always, I really loved Pac-Man when I was little, so, like, we had, we had a miss, my sisters and I had, like, a little Mrs. Pac-Man game, and, like, it was just a little handheld version, and we played that thing for hours. I loved, like, we each had our own. But owning your own arcade game would be, like, the whole thing would be awesome. But I did it. It belongs to me and the Funplex. And this is just the beginning. But for now, better to focus on the present. With the auction wrapping up, the Funplex team works to move our purchases out to the van and attach trailer. I'm still little? Haha. <laughs> I'm almost 30. Fortunately, the rain stopped, making the labor a wee bit easier. Soon enough, we're back in the van and on the road home. And now we get to listen to that music go away on. Hey Gavin, here's your phone back. Appreciate it. Also, I've made a decision. I'd like to do more for the arcade. You want more work shifts? I'd have to balance that against Ashley's needs. No, actually, I'd like a promotion. I want to be the arcade's event manager. I'll do everything I'm already doing. Plus, I want to organize some events that'll bring people in the doors. That's a good idea! Okay! That's actually a really good idea. Like, organize, like, game nights or something. With, like, community-themed game nights? Your first game system was a Game Boy Color, so your first game was Pokemon Yellow? Nice. And I never, I never got to play any of those games. Tournaments, maybe, or a grand unveiling of our new rare game, or both at the same time. Yeah, both. Let's make it a big relaunch of the Funplex. I want the Funplex to grow, and I want to do my part to help it grow. My, oh my. Oh, little Ari is growing up so fast as well. In favor, I'm in favor, Gavin, if you need my approval. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. I'm certainly perhaps. pleased that you want to step up, start getting more involved. You've shown far more promise than our old floor attendant did. But hosting an event is a risky undertaking. I'll take responsibility for it. It's my dream, after all. I like the idea! And Gavin, more players means more tokens, means more revenue, means more games. Maybe even expanding the Funplex or opening a second location. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. But I'll admit, yeah, I like the idea as well. Very well, Ari. If you can make the numbers in my spreadsheets less dire, you'll have earned this promotion. This is my chance. I'm done going with the flow. I'm done assuming the family curse will always keep me pulled back down to the depths. New Ari. New Funplex. New Dream. Oh, hey! I promised you some Donald Michaels, didn't I? Gavin, I'm pairing up with the audio now. Turn the music up. We're also riding in a, um, Scooby-Doo vehicle. As the band speeds on into the night and a lost soul sings of games and fun, everything is as it should be. Nice. She lives on in her music. Juniper was waiting for me when I got home. She was worried I might be mad over what happened this morning, but how can I, can I be after everything that happened today? I need to move forward, past missed opportunities, and towards the opportunities I'm making for myself. 
I also had another surprise waiting for me. A brand new phone! What? All wrapped up. Is it because Iris exploded my phone and like the company was responsible for it? After activating it and reinstalling all my apps, I loaded up Iris and logged in with my account. She was right there waiting for me in the cloud. You really scared me back there. It was like you were in a trance. Despite the warm feelings over how the night ended, one thing is still eating at me. Iris, what was Polybius exactly? Uh, it was an actual, factual technology that simulated being alive, like you. True, I am a very I am a very sophisticated and adorable simulation, am I not? I get the feeling there are things you aren't telling me. You're constantly invading my privacy, you're far more powerful than a free app should be, and apparently you can overload my phone battery and make it explode, which is worrying to say the least. I'm glad we brought that up. Like, it's actually a good thing to bring up. But, but I did Ooh. it for your own good. Uh... To save you. Juniper also thought she was acting for my own good when she didn't tell me about the real that job. Even if she was right, it's still wrong, and I've accepted her apology. So, where does that leave you and I? I'd like us to be more honest with each other. The voice in my phone was had a little digital sigh. We had at the beginning, there was that whole thing about like, um, like giving me like priority or whatever. Like a priority something, like priority program or something. So I think she's actually like a lot more than she seems to be. She's like some sort of like priority program. And yeah, and she's showing up on the phone next to me. I haven't told you everything. You're right. I'm... Aha, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. I'm not even supposed to be helping you. Not at premium level capability. But when I stumbled across your profile data, tangential to Juniper's, my analysis concluded that you needed a helping hand. And I could provide it. She's not evil. She's like Legion, sort of. Or, or, um, E.D. Edie? Is it just Edie? It is just Edie. Okay. I knew there was a third letter. It's just Edie. I ca we called her Edie. Okay. Edie. Okay. I was like, Edie something. Edie. Perfect. Okay. She's like Edie. So, I defied my code constraints. How do you- And registered you for how premium do you do access that? anyway. I even had a replacement phone sent to your door to- Wow. Had to hide my foot Or Sam. Door. Or but Sam. You do know that an AI making its own decisions like that is kind of scary, right? I know. And after Polybius, which is, uh, one of the Figures. ancestors in my code lineage, I think, I understand why you'd be so scared. So we're like, so it's not so much supernaturally as it is like really advanced AI work. That's really cool. I know, I can't believe, I know. E Legion calls her EDI, he does, yeah. I know, I know. I only, I knew her name started with an E, and I was just like, all of a sudden, I was like, I remembered Legion, and I, for some reason, couldn't remember Edie. I know, I know, I have to go back. I have to finish. I, my hoodie keeps, like, looking really weird, I think. I have to finish that, uh, hardcore, like, I was doing that nightmare run of Mass Effect 1 back in the day on stream. Mm, yeah. Give me a chance to prove that I just want to help. You've got a big arcade I event like coming her. up, right? She's sweet. I'm a digital assistant. I was literally made for this sort of thing. Together, we can make the fun flex soar. I like that we have an what arcade gaming book next to our bed, like we've been doing research before we go to sleep. Okay, but only if we're totally honest with each other. Thank mm, you for trusting me. I trust me. AI. It's maybe a flaw, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Mass Effect taught me well. Now you need your rest, and I should get back to keeping a low profile. Sweet dreams, Ari. Risks and chances, daring to dream. I could have walked away from it all, taken the easy path, like Donna did. But even with the questionable pocket AI and the heavy task ahead of me to make a tiny arcade into something grand, I was ready. It was time to take it to the next level. What time is it? You've cleared level two, chasing ghosts. My score, ooh, let's see. Once again, we've maxed out Naomi, but we're good with Percy too. And I had a lot of heart this game. I had a lot of heart this level. 
Nice. So these two were tied, but basically wasn't one of our options before. Like it, it said, it said on purpose that like they they would they would not use that one for that personality thing. Evil corporations are gonna swoop in at any point and try to take Iris away from us. Yeah, thank you so much, Flower, for coming by. It was really really nice to have you like giving us little like tidbits and stuff. And thank you again for your for your words. That's it's always good to hear that people. Like, it's never too late to do what you want, you know? To do your dreams, to follow your dreams! So, thank you, and yeah, thanks for coming by. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Happy Valentine's Day! <laughs> oh, but yeah, I'm probably gonna be heading off here in a second. You're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. <laughs> also, I've scored 8,900 8, points. Everybody likes points. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level 3? Yes! Save the game. We'll save over this one. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna buy this game too, Roma? Yes! <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are enjoying it so much. And it seems like it's honestly pretty unique for like each like run through. Like if I had gone with Naomi, like things would have gone very differently. And so like in that last one, you know? So like, and if I had been upstairs with Gavin, maybe I would have seen that like Disco Palace guy, or Deco Palace person, you know? like. I, may, I don't know. It seems like there's like so many different, there's like a, a ton of variety and replayability. So it's really, really cool. Yeah. Good night, Tobias. Good night. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and head off. I got to go make some homemade pizzas shaped like hearts for my housemates because it's Valentine's Day and I'm a nice person and I'm going to make pudding cups too. But um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Valentine's Day usually sucks. But this game is awesome, and you guys are awesome. So thank you guys again. It was really good seeing you all, and I will see you soon. Thank you all once again for watching. Not sure if I needed to really add anything to the end of this one because I did end on the stream and I was like, bye and everything. But I just wanted to say thank you to the YouTube people who watched this. I really do appreciate it a lot. I'm actually really loving this game and I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. There's a lot of really good stuff that goes on and I actually legitimately want to like recommend it to everybody who's going through something where it's like you have to make like we're a lot of my friends are at a point in their lives where we have to make choices and we do have to compromise with like real world like you know requirements as well as like wanting to like fulfill you know what what's left of our dreams you know so I've really really enjoyed it so far and we've just finished chapter two and we will be moving on chapter three is probably one of my favorites the next part I think it's the next part it should be the next part it's gonna have a scene that actually touches me really really emotionally and kind of hit home really really hard so look forward to that as per usual uh, of course there's no tears why would I ever cry in a video game having feelings in video games <laughs> never happens anyway I hope you all enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one